Welcome to PC Woods Kids Tech Talk. Today I'm very excited to show you the Intel Core 2 Quad Q8400 CPU. So this one here, I've had the uh, opportunity to review, it came out earlier this year, but um, it's a pretty good mainstream processor, 2.66 gigahertz with a multiplier of 6 to 8 and a default bus speed of 1333 megahertz. So this one here is a 95 watt CPU with good temperature tolerance. So we're gonna be able to overclock this easily, you can tell. Now the other thing is that it's a 45 nanometer architecture, so it's gonna use and dissipate less heat. As you can see, there's the max voltages that uh, it supports. So we're gonna try to increase the voltage within those limits and uh, see how we can do. But before you can do any of that, of course, you need a good board. There's a couple ingredients here to make it overclock and that's the Gigabyte board that I'm using here meets the specs 100% with no bias upgrade or anything. It's good to go. All I have to do is just slap the chip in the socket there and then with the two missing ingredients, a good CPU cooler and thermal paste, we're good to go, right? So just a little bit of thermal paste there and uh, once you have that set up properly, then you can just install the CPU cooler. And by the way, I'll, I'll make a separate video on installing the CPU cooler so you can see how easy it is to do that as well. Now this one here, as you can see, has lots of room for air and um, the board is pretty simple, it's pretty small, it's nothing uh, out of the ordinary. And we're gonna go ahead and install this in this test system that I've got. It's using the uh, HEF922 case, uh, GTX 260 Lightning, NVIDIA card, two uh, gigs of uh, RAM, standard hard drive. So this is a, a pretty decent system for uh, for testing this CPU. And here is the CPU-Z uh, information, of course, for this chip. So obviously it's detecting at 100%. You can see the voltage, 1.344 volts roughly, and uh, all the specs for that chip. The one thing that you want to notice here is that 3.4 gigahertz. How did I get that? Well, I put the multiplier in the BIOS to 8, and then I increased the bus speed there from about 420 to 430. You know, I tried it in small increments, and um, basically it gave me hassle-free 3.4 gigahertz. I ran stress testing for a while and um, never had any problems. By the way, this has 4 megs of level 2 cache. Okay, so for those of you that are interested in how much internal cache it's got, Here's my motherboard again, all the specs. I'm running it, of course, the PCI Express slot for the video card at X16, right? For those that are wondering about that. And um, the RAM is at the standard 1066 megahertz. And there are the timings for that two gigs of DDR2 RAM. Okay, so going back now to the GTX 260 that I'm running with this test system, as you can see, those are the, uh, the frequencies, right? So nothing out of the ordinary there. And I'm running the... Uh, test that room temperature 20 degrees Celsius just uh, in case if you're wondering and uh, with no load this processor with the cooler and the paste that I'm using it's giving me 30 to 35 degrees Celsius with no load terrific and then on full load right running it at 3.4 uh, gigahertz here full load 41 42 maybe it'll touch 43 on one of the cores but geez not even breaking a sweat here so as you can see very easy you could probably take this even further if you wanted but let's run the benchmarks with what i've got stable okay 3d mark vantage we're starting with that we're trying to get the cpu scores okay so you might be interested in the gpu score and everything else but at the end of the day it's 12,500 and change there as you can see for the cpu score i ran it on performance ran it on high just to make sure same score roughly now just to make sure I also ran the benchmarks on 3D Mark 06. So I got some uh, decent benchmarks, which I later compared with other CPUs and processors that I've tested. And this one came out to the 4800 range, as you can see there for the CPU score. But if you're interested in the overall score, there it is, 16813 for the 3D Marks. And of course, it is overclocked at 3.4 gigahertz. Now, just to check one more time, PC Mark Suite, 5733 was the total sweet marks that I got. So what does this all mean? Well, it means that it's faster than the latest Athlon 2X2. It's faster than the E8400. It's faster than the uh, Phenom 2, the 720 at 2.8, and the Phenom 2 920 at 2.8. But it's slower than the Q9400 and the uh, Phenom 2 955 at 3.8 gigahertz. So there you go. Gives you an idea, right? Because if you're going to spend money on this, you want to compare it to similar processors in price range and also some cheaper ones. 
Now, looking at my benchmarks for games, I'm running everything on high. Okay, so don't don't worry about it. I'm running it at 16. 80 by 1050 we're running maxed out high ultra high settings wherever possible and uh, these are of course the results and frames per second that i'm getting with this system okay so just so you know next with crisis warhead we're running about 35 frames per second max average 25 frames per second of course this is on ultra high settings and as well if we look at another game here tom clancy hawks around the internal uh, benchmark for that and you can see the results here, very, very high, very, very smooth. And on an older game as well, the the um, Call of Duty 4, I mean, look at that. 250 frames per second max, average 119 frames per second, terrific processor, easy to overclock, hassle-free. And the overclocking results were terrific. As you can see, this was a very easy processor to set up, install, and overclock. So based on that information and the price point, roughly right now is about $170. You can get that US at Newegg.com. Compare it around. If you like Intel and you're looking for an Intel quad-core processor, then this one here is the younger brother of the Q9400. And as you can see, it gave great results. So I'd like to thank Intel for providing it. And I hope you enjoy this video. And thank you for watching.